San Diego's Jazz 88.3 in the new jazz thing. Music there from Paradigm Shift, the new release from saxophonist Robert Dove. Robert joins us in studio this evening. Robert, welcome to the new jazz thing. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So uh, we're listening to the tune right there called The Intrepid Fox. Tell us about uh, the folks that you're playing with on the new disc. Well, the, the record that we have right now, um, we actually used all local San Diego musicians. Uh, we wanted to keep it that way, uh, just because we have such an incredible pool of artists here in this town, um, especially with being able to work um, as an understudy with Gilbert Castellanos, um, who's been such a major influence on my playing, as well as uh, how I've been able to play and present in the city. Uh, just over the past year and a half since I've been here has been pretty remarkable. Um, the artist that you were hearing on that cut as of this point um, was the quartet, the regular quartet, uh, including Gilbert as a featured artist uh, on trumpet, as you obviously heard, <laughs> just destroying as usual. Uh -huh. um, the uh, drummer uh, is Ryan Shaw, originally of Poway. He's actually a student at USC on drums. Um, he's 20. It's pretty remarkable of how much of a touch that man has at such a young age. Um, as well as uh, Dean Hewlett, a fellow recent transplant, um, as I am originally from Columbus, Ohio, Dean is originally from Cleveland. Mm. Um, there's a funny story that goes with that, and I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> um, and then as well as on piano, we have uh, Mr. Ed Kornhauser on piano. So that's going to make up the group for that track, as well as we, uh, we also invited a special guest. Uh, Marshall Hawkins is also on the record as well, Excellent. which you'll hear in another upcoming track here soon. So, so the new release is called Paradigm Shift. Uh, there, as I, uh, I see a few tunes on here that I recognize, When Sunny Gets Blue, uh, which we're going to be featuring uh, among others. Uh, are there some originals on this? Yeah, actually five of the, array, five of the eight are going to be originals. Um, the only three that were not originals were actually the ones that I did with the guest artist, which was The Intrepid Fox, as you just heard. Uh, when Sunny Gets Blue, which you will hear shortly, as well as Night Dreamer. Um, Night Dreamer was really fun just because I'm a huge, I'm hugely influenced by Wayne Shorter um, within my playing. And in regards to how the band operated, it was a great moment to be allowing Marshall and Gilbert to be able to integrate into the band at that point. And when you get a chance to hear the record, you'll really hear how the entire group kind of locks together. Mm -hmm. It's pretty an unbelievable moment. So, uh, you know, why was this the time to put out your debut CD? Why, what was it uh, about? Uh, was it your move to San Diego? Or, or, you know, had you been thinking about this for a while? To tell us a little bit about kind of the origins. It was actually a, an interesting start, to be honest. I was, I was actually talking to a couple of my friends back home, um, back home being Ohio, and where I went to school in North Carolina at the Miles Davis Jazz Studies Program. And uh, a couple of them were, were working on a couple of, of EPs and things of that nature. And it just kind of hit me. I'm like, we're in a position and we have the players 
to be able to do something like this. And so the brainchild, the idea kind of festered with me, for lack of a better term, for about three to four months. And I really kind of jumped on the opportunity in September. Um, I had a couple friends that were coming out with a couple of CDs in New York. Um, and it was just one of those type of things where it's like, I really need to get on board with this. And frankly, at that point, my playing hadn't felt any better. It was, it, I was really at kind of a peak at that point. And I've since actually gotten better since then. So it's always a learning process, as, as all mus- musicians will tell you. Um, and it was just one of those type of moments where I was like, okay, let's do it. And if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. And so kind of the big mantra that I've had as we've been working on this project is make sure that you do it right. You take care of the people that are working with you. You take care of how you, how you treat the music with the most utmost respect, um, especially with Wayne Shorter's, The Standards, and, and Freddie Hubbard's tune. I mean, those are three major charts that, that I grew up with as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and it goes back to when I was listening to records with my dad as a six-year-old in the basement. It was one of those type of things. So. so you mentioned you've been here in San Diego for about a year and a half now. Yes, sir. How does the music on Paradigm Shift reflect uh, growth or change since you've been here and involved in the jazz scene here in San Diego? Well, it's, it's interesting because a lot of the pieces... Um, most of the originals that I've actually played on this one are actually charts that I've written probably three or four years ago, um, which has been very interesting to see how the uh, music has evolved and how each chart, uh, how each piece of music has has changed, not just musically but emotionally. Um, I, I moved here and I was in a relationship when I first moved here. That has unfortunately since fallen apart. It is what it is. Gave me something to write about. Mm-hmm. Um, so for, for something of that, um, one of the charts that you'll hear coming up later, um, which is entitled Table for Two, um, I actually wrote that back in 2011. And it was kind of a hopeful experience. Um, but since uh, recording it initially in 2011 with my collegiate quartet and playing it on the record here, it's two completely different versions, and it's been very. It was very wild to listen to them side by side as as somebody who wrote it, and you actually got to listen to the evolution of a piece, and that was something that was really mind blowing. Well, um, let's play another tune from the disc. Um, tell us a little bit about your work on when Sunny gets blue. Well, this, the piece that we did with this one, it's it's a little bit of a different texture than most of the record, uh, because you have a full rhythm section, and with this one, I was very honored and humbled to be able to have the have Marshall Hawkins uh, be able to play on this version, and uh, we decided to actually do this one duo. So it's only upright bass and only tenor saxophone. It's just the two of us, and it's it's very, um, for lack of a better term, it's it's very um, intimate, mm. and it really forces the emotion out of the horn and the way that we're able to kind of play with the time and. Not necessarily push each other around, but it's just like a nice little glance. And you can kind of hear that, the conversation that's happening between the two of us. And the really wild part about this is um, this, this uh, recording of it, we only ended up doing two takes of. Nice. Because um, that was all that was needed. Because at that point, all the magic that we had for the first time of us actually just playing like this before... Um, It was really something special, and thankfully we were able to capture it. Well, let's check it out. We're chatting this evening with Robert Dove. Um, Before we play this, Robert, um, let's tell people where you're going to be releasing the CD and and give them that. We'll do it again, but uh, tell tell folks where uh, you're going to be playing this week. Absolutely. So Saturday, May 16th, we'll actually be performing, as well as the initial time that the CD is going to be for sale. Nice. That's going to be at 98 Bottles uh, at 2400 Kettner Boulevard. Uh, which is just north of Little Italy, just south of the airport. Um, so showtime's at 8 o'clock, but it's also a dinner and a show type of event. So seating actually starts at 7 o'clock. So you can get there an hour early, kind of hang out, grab a drink if you feel like it, grab some food if you're hungry. Um, but the entire quartet that was on the record is going to be there, as well as Gilbert is going to be the featured artist with me on that night. So I'm really, really excited. Excellent. We'll, uh, we'll give those details out again uh, a little bit later, but let's check out some music. This is... Robert Dove saxophone, Marshall Hawkins bass from the new release Paradigm Shift, When Sunny Gets Blue, on the new jazz thing, San Diego's Jazz 88.3. 
San Diego's Jazz 88.3. And the new jazz thing, music there from saxophonist Robert Dove in his new release, Paradigm Shift, When Sunny Gets Blue. Robert Dove joins us this evening on the new jazz thing. Robert, thanks for uh, hanging out with us tonight. Yeah, my pleasure. This is a blast. Well, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, where you, how you got here then. Uh, you grew up in Ohio, and yeah. uh, and you started playing uh, music pretty early on, actually. Yeah, yeah relatively early. Um, I was actually uh, started on violin. I was classically trained for nine years. Most people actually don't know about that. Um, but I actually uh, I had a love for the saxophone always since I was a little kid. Um, I think about, I want to say it was I was age five at the time. <laughs> um, I kept bothering my parents about getting me a saxophone. And obviously, most five-year-olds don't get one. Um, so my parents came up with some great idea um, and got me a uh, a saxophone play a saxophone-shaped bubble blower. Um, I promptly broke it in twenty minutes because I overused it. So <laughs> you overblew. I overblew. Yeah, <laughs> so it happens. Um, but yeah, I mean, they they kind of knew that there was something going on. Um, musically for me from a very early age uh, my dad and I I mean we still actually collect records um, and we had a really really nice setup in our basement and whenever we would have a a time where both of us were able to kind of sit down and relax because he was actually a a seventh grade social studies teacher for 35 years Mm. so just an incredible influence on on how to live your life as a person was was my dad and and my mom as well Um, but we would actually go down to the basement and just shut the lights off and just listen to LPs until we wore out the needle effectively. Um, I mean, and I I grew up listening to a lot of different artists across the board. Um, Now, when I finally became old enough to play a saxophone, um, I actually originally started on alto, and I ended up converting to tenor a little bit later, like three or four years down the road. Um, And they were hearing in regards to how um, I was able to develop sound um, how I knew something necessarily didn't sound right. Now, at that point, I didn't know if it was saying, quote-unquote, in tune or not, but I knew something wasn't right, exactly. Um, and I remember my elementary school teacher came up to, went up to my parents, my, my mom told me this later, and she said that um, my, my music instructor had said that he had never seen anything like it in 30 years, and that I needed to have private instruction because he didn't want me to lose that art Um, And so I actually started lessons as a fifth grader. Within three months of actually starting on the saxophone, I was on private lessons with a gentleman by the name of Mark Donovan, um, who I've actually known longer than his wife, believe it or not, um, which is a really wild story. Um, 
but yeah, Mark was my first instructor. I ended up working with him for many, many years, um, as well as taking with lessons of a bunch of different artists across the, ta across the city, just to be able to get different influences of what was going on. Um, at that point, I knew when I was in high school, I knew that music was my major choice. Um, I, there was a period in which I was actually debating um, whether to go for engineering or go for music because mm. I had the grades to do either because um, I was put into an advantageous position and I worked incredibly hard to basically give myself the opportunity to make that choice. Um, I ended up going to UNC Greensboro in North Carolina um, at the Miles Davis Jazz Studies Program and I worked with Chad Eby in that incredible stellar program um, for the next four years and then basically I decided that when I... Uh, I actually came out here to visit in January of 2013, and that was the first time I had met Gilbert. Um, and that was actually at the Seven Grand session um, in North Park at Seven Grand Whiskey Bar. And I remember um, getting on stage with a little bit of cotton mouth because I was jet lagged out of my mind. Um, and I got, I got myself handed to a little bit <laughs> that night. And I remember going up to Gilbert and asking, what do I need to do to be successful here? And he said, first, you need to go home and practice. And that was kind of the, okay, this is what I need to do. And I remember um, going back to school for my last semester as a senior and just working incredibly hard because I also had a senior recital that I was prepping for. And I booked a flight to come back out here in March. Um, I went, ended up going back out to Seven Grand, and I ran into him. And at this point, I, I had practiced <laughs> just, as he has at, just as he had asked. Um, and I played significantly better and we kind of talked and we stayed in contact and, um, after school, when I graduated, I ended up going home, uh, back to Columbus and took some time with my parents to earn a little bit of money. Cause when you come out of college, you're broke. I mean, it is what it is. Yep. Um, so I ended up staying home and, uh, worked as a bicycle technician, which is also one of my, my day things right now is one of my hobbies and my passions. Um, so I worked for three months and then I moved out here August 5th. And it's been a heck of a ride since. Excellent. And uh, it, it was funny. We were uh, we just had Dave Good here uh, talking uh, with us uh, and helping to uh, set up the interview we had with uh, Pastor Jerry Andrews and Archie Thompson. And Dave um, had a, a piece in the Reader back in October that you got some prominent uh, so, some prominent uh, name recognition in. And that, uh, and you were really impressed by what was happening here in San Diego. Yeah. Can you kind of compare, um, give folks who are here in San Diego and experience this scene, um, what maybe you thought was so different about the San Diego scene than others that you had seen? Well, I mean, the thing is, is like for, for San Diego, I mean, all music realms, I mean, different cities, New York, L.A., here, Miami. I mean, we are such a small community as it is. Uh, you really kind of have to gravitate towards each other. The jazz community. Exactly. Right. I mean, musicians in general, but especially right. the jazz community. Right. Um, and I felt that, um, I mean, I've I've gone and done a couple of things in New York, and I have a lot of friends there. I've, I've gone and done a couple of things in Los Angeles, and I have friends there. And all are really, really tight, but there was something about San Diego where I really felt like brought in it was like i mean it's effectively my second family out here i'm the only one of my family that lives out here and i know that every musician that i've worked with i mean they know that i have their back and i know that they have my back so it was a and welcoming it, thing it's, yeah. yeah and it's very very humbling as especially as an up like as a starting artist i mean you honest i mean it's like you're you're falling with style to quote Tory story it's yeah. one of those type of things you're not yeah. flying you're you're falling with style um and you're just trying to when you first get in, you just want to try to make things work. You want to, I mean, you don't necessarily how, know how they're going to work, but you're just trying to be a part of the process. And you always respect the process. And, and thankfully, like, Gilbert was, was, was very welcoming with open arms, and the rest of the crew has been very welcoming with open arms. And it's, it's really nice to just sometimes get away from the music for a little bit and just kind of sit down with the persons. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's really just, it's just been a blast. Great. Well, um, uh, Robert, uh, Paradigm Shift is being released this week at a concert. Um, give folks again the details on okay. that. Okay, Saturday, May 16th. It's going to be starting at 8 p.m. Seating starts at 7 o'clock, and that will be at 98 Bottles. Uh, which is 2400 Kettner Boulevard in northern Little Italy. 
And where can folks find out more information about you? Ah, um, the best way to actually do it as of right now, because I am currently updating my website, because as you've probably noticed, the bio is a little <laughs> bit outdated. Hey, you know. And it happens. Um, so it's just i got to get back on the ball with that. Um, Facebook, um, you can actually find me as an artist under Robert Dove Saxophonist. Um, or if you want to add the personal page, I would be more than happy to take questions, comments, concerns for that matter. <laughs> um, and... And just, I mean, don't hesitate to come up and talk to us. I mean, that's that's part of the thing is it's all, we've always considered it to be a big family. Excellent. Well, um, we've got uh, one more tune queued up uh, to take us out, and it is Table for Two. So tell us a little bit about uh, this. All right, Table for Two is actually one of the charts that I was talking about earlier where I wrote it a little bit sooner than most of the record. Uh, this one was actually composed in 2010, if I remember correctly. Um, that would be my sophomore year, if I remember. It's been too long. Um, and it's interesting because this is actually on my secondary instrument. I'm playing this on soprano. Mm. Um, so with this one, it was one of those moments where um, I actually wrote this at 4 o'clock in the morning. It's one of those things that just kind of shows up. Um, and you have to get out of bed and you have to write it down. Otherwise, you're going to forget it. Um, I ended up writing the tune in 20 minutes. Now, the significance behind the title table for two um, I actually wrote this for somebody um, who will remain, remain nameless. Um, it was one of the things when I first wrote it, um, it was talking about being hopeful for a table of, for two with this specific person. Mm. Now, since that has gone by the wayside, um, and this is talking about the evolution of a tune, the, the piece has actually kind of taken a different route, and it's understanding that there will always be that table for two. It's just you don't know where it's going to be. Yeah. And that's kind of the fun part. Excellent. Well, Robert, uh, it's been great to meet you and uh, get to know you and welcome you here into San Diego. And this is a great way uh, to introduce yourself to San Diego with a fantastic new disc, Paradigm Shift. And uh, we'll look forward to hearing more from you and, uh, and checking out what's happening in the future. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Robert Dove, his new disc is Paradigm Shift. There's uh, information about the CD release party. Uh, coming up uh, on the jazz88.org blog, uh, tonight's new jazz thing post, so you can check that out at jazz88.org. This is, from Paradigm Shift, Table for Two on the new jazz thing on San Diego's Jazz 88.3. Excellent. Okay, great. Thanks. Oh, no. Uh -huh. no thank you. Blast.